Okay. Yeah, I think it's just going to be two quizzes and then we're going to move on to the next unit. Great, thank you. Wonderful. Wonderful. It's, um, I okay. Uh, let me just spend some time uh, writing down these definitions and then uh, have you guys copy this down. Okay. The parabola is a conic section where the distance from one fixed point focused in the line to rectrix is equal.
Okay, so um, let me read through these here. So vertex is the highest or lowest point in the vertical parabola or the furthest left or right point on the horizontal parabola. Um, axis of symmetry is a line that passes through the vertex in the focus. So we're going to see some uh, important points along um, and, and focus, directrix, and p value. They're all going to be lined up. Focus is a fixed point inside the parabola, the distance, and p is the distance from the vertex of the focus. I'll show you the diagram uh, where all this is sitting. Directrix is aligned perpendicular to the axis of symmetry. So I abbreviated axis of symmetry with AOS. That is equidistant from the vertex of the focus and behind the parabola. And then finally, the focal width that will be helpful to help us figure out how wide to make our parabola is the cord running through the focus with endpoints on the parabola. And let me point some of these things out. I um on your um calendar, I uh, it feels like a duplicate, uh, but I just want to kind of give you different um variations of summary sheets. So um, so I have one that's on the back page of your um, calendar, but I also printed out another one that's a little bigger. So let me kind of point out these features um, on this uh, parabola sheet here. So we talked about how the vertex is either the, the uh, lowest or highest point. So, you know, a parabola can either open up or can open down. You can either open to the left or open to the right, but your vertex is always going to be the point that's the furthest, um, um, highest or lowest or furthest to the left or furthest to the right. Okay. We have axis symmetry. Axis symmetry is always going to split your parabola in half. Okay. So if you, if you fold, imagine folding a, across along that dotted line, your, uh, your, Parabola will always fold over each other. Right. So vertex is, in this case, is it's the lowest point. Okay. Uh, but focus is a, a special point that's inside um, the parabola. Uh, this kind of helps us to def, uh, define how wide and, and, and how narrow the parabola is. Um, and there's also a point directrix. Okay, so directrix, uh, these focus and directrix, um, we're not going to really see it, but these are um, uh, features that, that, that creates a, the, the uh, relationship that a parabola has. Okay, but for us, we just have to know that there's a vertex, there's a focus that's inside, and there's a directrix that's a line that's outside. And they're all going to be the same distance away from each other, and that distance is called the p-value. Okay. Yeah. What determines uh, So we're not going to have to do all that Geometric calculation, it'll all be given in the equation. And um, basically, whatever that p value is, either we solve it or we are given it. And then, whatever that p value is, then we can know how far to make that distance, right? So, we're always going to have a way to get to that distance to uh, create this, um, this picture. Okay. Now, when you think of um, a parabola, what's the equation that comes to mind? Okay, even simpler, y equals what? X squared, right? So if you associate that with a parabola, and you associate it with a parabola that opens up, right? So if you look at the formula here, I mean, it looks messier, but it's the same idea, right? It's the x that's being squared. So if the x is being squared, then your parabola is going to either op open up or down, okay? But if your y is squared, then your parabola opens either left or right, because this is not a function. And anytime your y is squared, it's always going to be something that will not pass the vertical line test. What's the same uh, feeling uh, with a problem that opens left or right? Your vertex is still, in this case, furthest left. Your directrix is always outside the parabola, and your focus is always inside the parabola. And, and this, in this case, the axis of symmetry is going to be horizontal because that's the only way I can fold my parabola and get the, my parabola to. Um, to fold over each other. Okay. And then um, let me point out a few things here. Your vertex is your HK. So HK shows up in your equation. Okay. 
So X and Y are variables, but H and K is your vertex. Okay. Your H always goes with the X and your K always goes, goes with the Y. Okay. So sometimes sometimes things are flipped around here. So just know that if whatever your order pair is, make sure your X value goes with your X and then your Y value goes with your Y. And this minus sign doesn't mean that uh, your equation is always going to be negative. It just means that it will always be the opposite of the order pair that you see here. So whatever order pair is for the vertex, it's always going to be the opposite sign once you put it into the parentheses. Okay. Similar uh, sh um, set of uh, instructions um, uh, on the second page, but I just feel those a little bit cleaner. Uh, there's also, um, let's see, I, I talked about oh, focal width. Okay, so is, the focal width is not drawn on this diagram, but it says focal width is a cord running through the focus with endpoints on the parabola. So we can draw it in here. So um, if I pick two points, that's on either end of the focus, connect those two points, that's your focal width. And it's got a special formula, absolute value of 4p. So if you know the p value, you just multiply that by 4. And the absolute value just means, you know, let's take the positive value. If it's negative 8, then don't, don't, don't understand that, OK, that width is a positive 8. And then if the um, parabola opens left and right, then you know that your focal width is going to be vertical. The nice thing about focal width is it, it kind of helps you um, it helps you kind of shape your parabola a little bit better. So you can have, have an idea how wide to initially make your parabola without having to plot every point. So it kind of gives you a little bit more um, uh, information about how wide or how narrow to, to, to uh, make, your, make your parabola. So it'll always um, be, um, perpendicular to your axis, and it'll always um, stop and end on the parabola, but it's going to have to go through the focus. OK, so I think the best way is just to jump into examples and just have us uh, try a bunch of problems. And I'll just point things out as we go along. Okay, so let's look at number one. Uh, we got x minus 2 squared equals 8 times y plus 1. Just by looking at the formula without knowing anything else, is this parabola going to either open up or down, or is it going to be a left-right parabola? Yeah. Maybe up, down, right? Because you see the x is square, so without even knowing whether it's up or down, you know it has to be one of those variations, right? It cannot be left and right because the x is squared. Now, um, we look at the right side here, right? Uh, the right side is a positive 8. Um, and so basically, whatever uh, that coefficient is, if it's positive or negative, that's going to help you decide whether it's either up or down. But it's a positive 8, so that tells me it's going to be an up or down parabola. So I just like to kind of just have a, a, a shape next to it. It just kind of gives me some, some um, reference because I know I don't know the full detail, but at least I know that much. I know it's a problem that's, that's going to open up. Okay. Now, your vertex is going to be your HK. And your HK is going to follow along what's inside the parentheses next to your X and Y. So whatever is next to your X, that's your X value. Whatever is next to your Y is your Y value. But the only thing is we got to change the what? The signs. Yeah, so your order pair for your vertex is 2, negative 1. Your H is always next to the X. Your K is always next to the Y. OK, so I'm going to go ahead and plot my uh, vertex at 2, negative 1. Right now, I don't want to draw the parabola just yet, but I know it's going to open up. And that's going to open up. Um, and then my axis symmetry has to cut my parabola in half 
So I kind of know where my dotted line is going to be, right? My dotted line is going to be a vertical line that's going to go right through my vertex. I'll put a V next to that point. So I know that's really the center of my parabola. Let me use just a different color in here and uh, highlight this. Uh, here's my axis of symmetry. And I don't need to draw my parabola just yet, but at least I know that's my dividing line, which is going to split my parabola in half. Does anybody know what the equation of this vertical line is? Good. X equals two. So whenever you have a vertical line, it's always, can't just say two or three. We have to put it in this form. X equals whatever that number is. And the axis of symmetry is always going to match your H, assuming it's um, vertical. All right, focus. Now your focus is always um, going to be coming from your p-value. Okay, so how do we find that p-value? Um, if you look at this eight, that is the same as the location as that four p. Okay, so basically, uh, if we want to find our p-value, we always set whatever's in front of the parentheses equal to four p. You see how everything matches up here? X minus h squared equals four p times y plus one. So I'm going to highlight those here. So 4p is equal to 8. That's the connection to help us find our p value. Okay. So off to the side, I'm going to put that 4p equals 8. Okay. Solve for p, p equals what? 2. Okay. Now I want to keep um, us. Um, Understanding the uh, the reference here or the the connection between all this because the folk because the vertex because the problem is opening up, you know your focus has to be inside, so it has to be above, right? And then your directors has to be outside, so it's going to be below. Right? So it's always going to be in this um, orientation, right? If my focus, if my if my if my graph is opening up, my vertex is in the middle, my focus is above, and my directors is below. So my p-value is going to help me decide how far to get to my focus and also how far, how far to get to my directions. So I'm going to um, start with a vertex. I'm going to go up two units to get to my focus. The F next to that. What's the order pair of the focus? The one, OK. This is basically what we're doing here, right? We know the location of the vertex, we know the p value, so we just count it up to reach that location. Same idea. Uh, start on your vertex, and now I'm going to count two units down to get to a point where I can begin to draw my directrix. Okay, so two units down. One, two. I like that point, and now I'm going to draw a horizontal line which is going to be my directrix. My directrix is not going to be a point. It's going to be a line, but I always have to plot that point so I kind of know where to draw my horizontal line. Okay. What's the equation of that horizontal line? Good. Y equals what? Negative three. Horizontal line is always Y equals. Vertical line is always X equals. Okay, focal width is the absolute value of 4p. Okay. We know what 4p is, right? 4p is equal to 8. There's no need to change the sign because it's already positive. So your focal width is 8. So what you want to do is you want from uh, either side of the focus to get um, to have a total length of 8. So if I know my focal width is eight and I'm starting in the middle, how many units am I going to count on either side? Four, good. So you got to make that adjustment. The entire length is going to be eight. So we don't want to start in the middle and count eight one way and count eight the other. Then you're going to double the length. It's too much. So from the focus, I'm only going to count four units to the right. So from end to end, 
it should be eight units. The nice thing about the focal width is it kind of helps you give a feel as to how wide to make that parabola. OK, so if you have these three points, you can kind of um, create the width of that parabola a little bit easier, a little bit cleaner. It's not going to be perfect, but um, having that focal width there uh, gives you some direction. Because it's called the focal width, so that means I have to um, my my focal width it is is um, a core that goes through the focus. Oh, sorry, sorry. Did I? Oh, my bad, my bad. You're right. You're right. Sorry. I start on the on, on the directrix. Sorry, my, my parabola should start on the vertex and not down at this point. Thanks. Okay, sorry about that confusion. Okay, so um, my parabola has to go through the vertex. My vertex is my lowest point. Uh, but I'm going to go through that those focal width uh, endpoints uh, to give my to give the provide the shape of my parabola. Okay. Any questions so far? All right. Number two. Um, y plus three squared equals negative four x. Um, this is going to be a left, right, or up, down. Yeah, so right, that y squared, so we know it's going to either open left or right. I like to um, get my equation to look like my formula. So if I don't see a set of parentheses, I just like to create a set of parentheses. Um, you don't have to do it, but it just feels a little cleaner if everything is mashed up. So what I can do is I can factor a 4 out and just put an x minus y. One. But an x is just x is the same thing as saying x minus what? Zero. Yeah. So having that zero there, I think is helpful because you can kind of see, okay, I have h and k. One of them is going to be zero. The same thing, but it just feels like I have all my pieces there. OK, um, we know it's either going to open left or right. And the negative is going to tell us which direction we're going in, right? So we're going to associate left with negative, and we're going to associate right with positive. So we know this problem is going to open to the left because it's y squared, and there's a negative uh, p-value. So I know that my graph is going to kind of have this opening. Which means that my axis of symmetry is going to go somewhere like this. My focus is going to be somewhere inside. And then my directories will look like this. Right, so I don't know where all those pieces are, but I know that in relation to everything else, it's going to look like that, right? My vertex, my focus is to the left because it's going to be inside. My direction is to the right. My axis is going to be a horizontal line. My directory is going to be a vertical line. Right, so without even knowing, all the details, I already kind of know where things need to be placed in relation to each other. OK, so where's my vertex going to be? Good, so if you're always reading from left to right, we'd, we want we'd want to do that. We want to associate uh, the number next to the X as your H and the number next to your Y as your K. So and then change the sign uh, whenever you see those numbers. So it's going to be 0, comma, negative 3. Okay, I'll go ahead and label that point and put V next to it. All right, axis of symmetry, I kind of know what where it's going to be, right? It's going to have to cut through my vertex and it's going to have to split my parabola in half. So I'm going to go ahead and draw my horizontal line. 
what's the equation of that axis? Y equals M squared. Now to find your focus, we got to find the p-value. So that's our next goal to find the p-value. What you're going to do is you're always going to set what's outside the parentheses equal to 4p. You're always setting 4p equal to that value and then solving for p. Okay. Divide both sides by 4, p equals negative 1. So I know I'm going to go one unit away from my vertex to get to my focus, and I'll move one unit away from my vertex to get to my directions. Mm -hmm. I'm kind of confused how you can have a negative local width if it's the absolute value of 4p. Right. So, um, P is negative one, right? So focal width will be four times negative one, which is what? Negative four. Negative four. And then what's the absolute value of negative four? Four. Four. So yeah. it's going to be four. Oh, oh. So that absolute value will always protect any negative and turn into a positive. Okay. So my focus is one unit away from my vertex. We can just count. What's the unit? What's the order pair for that focus? Yeah, negative one, negative three. Directrix is one unit away from the vertex on the other side. Right? It's got to be to it's got to be to the right because it's got to be outside the parabola, but it's a vertical line, so we don't want to say an order pair. We want to give the equation of this line. What's the equation of this line here? X equals one. Yeah, so your directrix is not I, you know, I do like to put a point there just so I can know where to draw that vertical line. But once I draw the vertical line, I don't care about that point. I'm going to reference the equation of that line, which is x equals 1. Okay. Focal width is the absolute value of 4p. P is negative 1. 4 times negative 1 is negative 4. But the absolute value will turn it back to a positive 4. My focal width, I'm going to start on the focus and I'm going to go up unit up how many units? Good, two, right? The whole length is four, so I only want to go half if I want to start in the middle, right? Up two and down two. So taking the two endpoints of your focal width and the vertex, you're going to um, kind of sketch out the the width of your parabola. It does not be accurate, but just try to make it smooth. Draw as best you can. You know, your accuracy is not that important, but you just want to um, do the best you can to try to make it symmetrical. Okay, let's see if we can do. Um, so we've done. Let's do two and three. Okay, let's do two and three so we can see all the different variations in terms of um, the opening left, up, down, or left or right. So we'll just do two and three and it'll be done. Okay. All right, so just by looking at this equation, the y is being squared. Is this uh, up, down, or left, right? Left, right, and it's a positive 12, so that means it's opening to the, the right, yeah. 
So without even knowing anything, I know my parabola is going to look like this. My vertex is here. My focus is here. My directrix is here. So it's always going to be in that relation to each other. Okay, so now I'm just going to try to put everything in the proper place, but I know it's going to look end up looking like like this in the end. Now, when you hit the focal width, make sure you still have the parabola continuing expand. So don't let it hit the focal width and just let it flatten out, right? There's not going to be any sharp turns. Uh, there's not going to be any flat surfaces. It's, it's always going to kind of, kind of open, continue, continually opening up. Actually. The focal width just kind of gives you an idea of how wide to initially start off your parabola. Make sure that you're not counting the entire unit 12, right? You're only going to count half of it because you want the end to end to be 12. So I got to be six and six to add up to be 12. Okay, let's do one more, number three. Number three, I see the X being squared. It's got to be either up or down, but the negative four tells me, okay, it's got to be opening down. So if I open down, I know uh, my focus is now going to be below my vertex. My directress is going to be above.
one vertex. I'll go down one unit to hit my focus. I'll go one, up one unit to get a location so I can draw my directories. Okay. Any questions here? Okay, now after we come back um, uh, from uh, break, we're going to be looking, we're, we're still being, we'll have a second day of parabola, but we're looking at equations that are not quite set up as nice. We've got to go through completely square and and look at you know, some problems that that gives us information uh, from a different perspective. But um, we kind of started with the basics, and we're going to just build on this. All right, you go and get your phones. Okay. Mm -hmm. um.